Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Ang from the Asian Eye Institute in the Philippines. I'm uh, here to present uh, my paper on uh, ICH small aperture IOL clinical pearls. So we, uh, we want to show monocular and binocular visual performance and how it corrects astigmatism. Uh, I am an investigator and uh, part of the Medical Advisory Board of Apifocus. So what is the IC8 IOL? It's a small aperture IOL may, uh, made from a single piece hydrophobic acrylic IOL. So it's just like any of your other brands of hydrophobic acrylic IOL with square edge design. Now, inside this IOL, there is a mask. So this mask looks very similar to the Acufocus camera inlay, but it is smaller. So the material is the same. It's made of PVDF and nanoparticles of carbon. Thus, the aperture in the middle is smaller. It's 1.36 millimeters compared to the aperture of the inlay, which is 1.6 millimeters. The outer diameter of the mask in the IC8 is 3.23. Both the inlay and the IOL have microperforations to allow light to pass through. So it's not a completely dark mask and it's five microns thick and it's embedded within the material of the hydrophobic acrylic IOL. So the first thing about uh, doing the IC8 surgery is you don't have to change your surgical technique. So you can choose whether you do a manual or femtosecond laser incisions, capsulotomy, lens fragmentation. Uh, both techniques are very applicable. Now, you have to put the IC8 inside the capsular bag. So you cannot put it in the sulcus. Both haptics have to be inside the capsular bag. And we recommend placing the haptics at 6 to 12 o'clock. So it's a vertical position. And you want to nudge it a little bit nasal so that it's well within the pupil aperture. To date, we have no centration issues as long as you follow these guidelines. So um, we did one study wherein we compared uh, the performance of the IC8 when we implant it bilaterally versus if we implant it contralaterally or only in one eye and the fellow eye will have a standard monofocal IOL. In this study, uh, this is a, random, a non randomized study, we have 22 subjects. 10 subjects uh, were implanted bilaterally because they uh, requested for the IC8 in their fellow eye after implantation in the first eye. So uh, they were very happy with the results and they requested for it. It is included in our protocol that patients who uh, voluntarily uh, tell us that they want the IC8 in the fellow eye, we can include them in this group. The other 12 patients already had a monofocal IOL in the first eye and we implanted the IC8 in their fellow eye. So we have two groups and we follow these patients over time. So right now, we're presenting results up to three-year follow-up of this group of patients. So we, we, the IC8, small aperture IOL, we want you to target them to about minus 0.75 diopters of residual refraction. So um, the recommended A constant is 1 to 0 0.5. And the recommended target is minus 0.75. I personally use the Barrett Universal Calculator to compute the lens power, which I will implant. The reason for targeting a mild myopia of about minus 0.75 is the small aperture optics theoretically provide us about two diopters of extended depth of field. If you add minus 0.75, myopia, you have better near vision performance. Now, this minus 75 0.75 diopter myopia uh, does not affect the distance vision much because the small aperture optics corrects the far vision. So you have a small aperture which is reinforced by the minus 75 
but the small aperture corrects the mild myopia of 0.75, retaining very good distance vision. So this is the sweet spot of what you want to target. For bilateral group, uh, we prefer that the non-dominant eye is targeted for minus 0.75 and the fellow eye is targeted for plano. So what about uncorrected vis uh, visual acuity? So as you can see, the left, uh, the left figure is contralateral implantation and the right figure is bilateral implantation. The first bar, uncorrected near vision, you see that 80% are 2025 or better in the bilateral group and only about 58% are 2025 or better in the contralateral group. So in terms of uncorrected near vision, more eyes in the bilateral group have 2025 or better. In terms of intermediate vision, you see that 90% of the bilateral group have 2020 or better intermediate vision versus 50% only in the contralateral implanted group. So in terms of near and intermediate vision, the bilateral implant group are superior to the contralateral implant group. Distance vision is very similar in both groups. What about distance corrected visual acuity? So if we remove all the effect of residual refractive error, again, you see that at 85% of the bilateral group are 2025 or better in terms of distance corrected near vision versus 50% in the contralateral group. And in the intermediate vision, 85% of the bilateral implant group I have 2020 or better intermediate vision versus 58 of the contralateral group. So uh, the pattern holds that whether there is or there is not any residual uh, refractive error, intermediate and near vision are better in the bilateral group. So what about the focus curve? The focus curves are very tricky because uh, it entails the patients retaining a uh, good attention span while we test. So we tried our best to test the defocus curve. The orange curve represents the monofocal IOL eyes. So you see that the, the peak, the slope is narrower, and then the light blue IC8 eyes only, it's wider, and then the darker blue and the green, bilateral and contralateral group, they're much wider. So whether you implant the IC8 in one eye or in both eyes, you're better off than a monofocal IOL or IC8 in one eye only. So bilateral, uh, both uh, bilateral vision is better than mono, monolateral and bilateral and contralateral groups showed similar defocus curve. So what about uh, contrast sensitivity? We're worried that when you put an IC8 small aperture in both eyes, are you sacrificing too much contrast sensitivity? So again, here on the left and on the right, you see photopic contrast sensitivity without glare, on the right with glare, and you see that the graphs are very similar. Uh, they don't have a large separation from each other. So photopic contrast sensitivity are not statistically significantly different between the groups. What about mesopic contrast sensitivity? So in terms of mesopic, uh, on the left without glare, it's very similar and very close. While on the right, mesopic contrast with glare, there is some amount of separation at the 3, 6, and 12 cycles per diopter. So in terms of mesopic contrast sensitivity with glare, the contralateral group seem to perform slightly better than the bilateral group. So one other thing, advantage we see in the small aperture IOL is in terms of astigmatism correction or tolerance. So we wanted to find out what the effect of astigmatism is on a small aperture IOL versus two popular trifocal IOLs. We did this prospective single center study on patients who already had cataract surgery and were implanted with these uh, one of three of these types of IOLs. Um, one group with the IC8, the other group AT LISA trifocal, and the third group fine vision. So first, we neutralized any residual 
refractive error. We started from best corrected vision. So they start from Plano. After that, we put, we started putting um, Hindu cylinders. So we started from a 2.5 diopter cylinder lens, trial lens, and then we put it and we gradually reduced the cylinder by 0.5 diopter increments. We tested the eyes at three different axes. One is 90 degrees, one is 80 degrees, and the third is at the oblique axis. And then we measured the visual acuity at each incremental change in cylinder. So at 90 degrees, which is as, uh, against the rule astigmatism, you see that, that the blue dotted line represents the IC8, has a higher or better log bar visual acuity across the entire spectrum compared to fine vision in ATV such trifocal. The asterisks represent statistically significant difference. So you see that uh, from 0.5 diopter cylinder to 1 diopter, 1.5, all the way to 2.5, the IC8 is statistically better. Now, at 1.5 diopter cylinder, it's important to note that the IC8 maintains 2025 or better visual acuity. Whereas in, in the terms of the other two trifocal IOLs, the logmar vision drops off at 0.5 one day after and keeps getting worse. What about at with the rule astigmatism? So uh, you see the same pattern wherein the IC8 performs better uh, at the different cylinder refocus, and you see the statistical significance. Again, uh, with up to 1.5 diopters of cylinder, the IC8 still maintains about 20-25 vision compared to the AT Lisa or fine vision trifle. Now, at the oblique axis, the difference is more striking. You can see that the, the curves have separated quite a lot, and you see that statistical significant difference is maintained all the way beginning from 0.5 diopters. So if you have an oblique axis uh, residual cylinder with a trifocal IOLs, even at 0.5 diopters, you see a big drop in visual acuity, and you see that all the way as you increase cylinder. Whereas, whereas the IC8, you still maintain 2025 or 0.1 log mark, at 1.5 diopter cylinder. So in summary, uh, for this induced astigmatism study, uh, we achieved excellent monocular and binocular outcomes for near intermediate vision. Bilateral patients had better near and intermediate vision compared to contralateral patients. So the visual performance in terms of presbyopia correction are better if you implant the IC8 bilaterally. Now, whether uh, bilaterally or contralaterally, patients had low symptoms and very high patient satisfaction. So the patients are quite happy with the IC8 IOL. And they achieved comparable photopic and mesopic contrast sensitivity results. Now, in terms of astigmatism, the IC8 maintains 2025 or better visual acuity with up to 1.5 diopters of cylinder. Up to 80% of patients have cylinders of less than 1.5 uh, diopter cylinders. So there's a big market for these low uh, astigmatism patients, but you see that even with up to one diopter of residual cylinder, visual acuity is very much affected in the trifocal IOM group. So the IC8 performs statistically significantly better than trifocal IOM in the presence of induced astigmatism. Thank you very much.